Hello, my name is Stuart Rolke. I am coming at you live from Somerville Media Center in Somerville, Massachusetts, and welcome to part three of our four-part series on Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to easily animate in After Effects using keyframes. What are keyframes? Well, in hand-drawn animation, keyframes represent major changes in position, scale, color, and design. But I can't draw. Well, in modern motion graphics and animation, keyframing is also used to describe an automated change in these values. As I mentioned before, you can use this technique to animate position, scale, color, design, and so much more. Keyframing can literally be used on anything in the timeline. Okay, so for this tutorial, we will start a new project. You should already be familiar with this. Uh, if you haven't, please rewatch the first tutorial, but I'm just going to make this new project. It's called delete, that's all. <laughs> and we'll also have to create a new composition. <laughs> Great, awesome. Before we start animating, we will need something to animate. And today I'm not gonna be using pictures or video. I'm just going to make a basic vector shape which you can do down here by right clicking and going to new solid. So this will make a square and the width and height of our entire composition is this size. So we're actually gonna wanna make this smaller so we can actually see the square. I'm going to divide it by four and square it off. We can call this animated square. Okay, so now we have this boring white square and we are going to make it more exciting by animating it with keyframes. So. so, right down here, we have our object. It's filling up the entire timeline. It's great. Um, we're gonna animate it and we can do that by clicking this triangle. Um, this brings up all the effects that are on it right now. And because we don't have any special effects we're working with, it only has transform. So we're gonna click that triangle as well. And that's great because we're gonna start with just animating the transforms. So as I said earlier, you can animate the scale and the position. Um, you can even do opacity. And the way we do that is we pick what we wanna do. So I'm gonna start with scale and we click this little stopwatch over here. Um, and what that does is that makes our first keyframe, which is this little diamond right here. Um, keyframes can be dragged around, similar to clips. Um, if you drag the clip, you can see the keyframe follows it. The keyframes stay in sync with that. But for now, so we have uh, scale keyframed. If we go further down the timeline, we can make more keyframes. And if we watch this, nothing happens. And that's because we haven't told it to change the value. Oh. Now, since we are making keyframes for the scale function, you know, as I said before, keyframing is a, a drastic change in something over a period of time. And this is the automated way of doing it. So how do we do that? How do we tell it, say, go from a very small size to its regular size? Well, we've already made two keyframes and you can change the value of a keyframe when you're directly over it. If you look over here, it will let you know when you're on top of a keyframe or not. So you wanna make sure you're exactly on top of a keyframe and then you can change the value. So we've changed scale now to zero and that means the item is basically gone. It's as small as it can be. But the keyframe over here is still 100. And if we drag one of the keyframes closer, you know the animation becomes faster. If we drag it further, the animation becomes way slower. So we're just gonna leave this. We're gonna bring it back to two seconds. If you want to, you can move your cursor where you want to put the keyframe and it will sort of snap right there a little bit, right where we're at two, keyframe is at two. If we go back to zero, where we're at zero, our keyframe's at zero. Um, so it, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to positioning them just right and making sure you're directly on them before you decide to change the values, but you'll get used to it. So right now our square, grows big, that's it. 
Um, what if we want to make it move around? Well, so that is the position selection right over here. And so we'll hit the stopwatch again. Uh, the first keyframe again is put on two right where our cursor was. And if we drag it right over to four right there, we can make another keyframe and then we can watch it. And nothing new happens. And again, that's because we didn't change the value. So remember, anytime you're making keyframes, nothing will happen until you choose which value you want to change. Um, with position, you have a, um, or I guess vertical and horizontal position. So if I drag these, you can see that these values will affect where the object will end up. Um, and you can actually see that there's a line created that shows us where the object will be moving from. So over here is the first keyframe, over here is the last keyframe, and these are just guides. These will disappear in your final animation, but Hooray! it's nice to be able to see where we're moving to. Ah! Um, let's just go all the way to the left of the screen. And now if we scroll back, if you go all the way to the beginning, you'll see that we still have our scaling animation and then we have our position animation. Um, we can move just the position animation by highlighting these keyframes and scooting them over. So now they'll both happen at the same time. Um, if we want them to happen far away from each other, again, highlight, you can move it wherever you want. So that'll be some of the basic animations you'll wanna play around with. Um, you can do this with text. Um, you can do it with video clips, with graphics. You know, you can draw something, you can scan it, whatever, you can start animating. Um, it's great. I want to add a little rotation because again, you can do anything. Um, and as you get faster with this, you'll get mo more proficient, you know, making animations very quickly. Um, another really cool thing you can do is you can highlight a bunch of keyframes. So we're going to highlight all of these first values, you know, where the object is at the center. It's not doing anything. It's invisible. We can select those. You can copy with, you know, control copy or command copy or edit copy, whichever one. And you can paste with command V, control V, edit paste, you know the drill. And now we have everything starting at that value. It goes over here and it goes back to the first value. And you know, the same goes for if we want to take these again. Now we have this repeating animation. You can also select specific keyframes and hit delete um, if you want to change them. So say if we wanted the rotation to continue moving clockwise instead of going back to counterclockwise, you know, we can delete the rotation value. We can move it to 180, which is like twice, you know, it goes from zero to 90 to 180. Um, one of the most helpful things I learned while starting is easing the keyframes. Um, so, you know, as you watch this animation, you might think, wow, this looks really like Stark. It doesn't have a lot of personality. Um, when it hits the edge, it just sort of hits the edge and immediately bounces off. It doesn't look very good. Um, and we can make it look a little bit more natural. Um, give it a little bit more swing by selecting our keyframes, right clicking one of them, going to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease. And you can see right here, you can also hit, just hit F9. And that will make all these sort of diamond keyframes turn into little, what look like hourglasses. And when we play it now, the animation is kind of smoothed out. It might be kind of confusing, but what will make it easier is if we open up right here, if we open the graph editor um, and we click on one of the animations. So let's click on position. You can actually see um, and we can, we can shrink this down a bit over here. Um, it starts slow and right about here is as fast as it'll go and then it ends slow. And let's say that we just undo those. So now the easy ease is gone. We go back to the graph editor, click position. And now you can see it's kind of linear um, and there is no curve between the values. There's no easing. Um, when it hits here, it just is a peak and then immediately starts going back. So we'll leave this again. We'll select all our keyframes, easy ease, graph editor. And you can actually, you can highlight multiple animations. 
Um, and now you can see all the different curves happening. Hooray! That can be very useful for making things look more natural. Um, if you get more advanced, you can play around with the curves directly. Um, generally, this isn't recommended. It's it's usually better to just use the graph editor. <gasps> but it can be very useful, especially if you're trying to see, you know, if if all your animations have ease on them. Hooray! If you leave the graph editor, um, you can go back to the old way, to the linear way, by selecting them, right clicking, uh, going to keyframe interpolation. Right here it says Bezier, which is the, the name for the curve. Scientifically, it's called the Bezier curve. You can click that, we can switch it to a linear, um, hit OK, and now they're back to where it's just direct lines. So I'm gonna select all mine. I like it better with Easy Ease on 90% of the time I think I use Easy Ease. Um, something else that can make your animation look a lot nicer, which is potentially overused, but still very useful, is Motion Blur, which you can find right here. Um, you can click it, and that activates it. But if we watch, it doesn't look like anything has changed. Um, and that's because it just activates it for the composition. To activate it for the specific element, you also have to make, you know, check this little box with Motion Blur. We'll play it again. <gasps> and you can see a little bit of blurring happening. Um, say we take these values. Uh, let's shoot it over to the other side of the screen. Um, so I did that just by, you know, putting a value that's way over here. Um, but just precisely, I know that our cube is a certain size. And so this is exactly the other side. Um, you'll get used to stuff like that, but this should show off the motion blur <gasps> a lot better. Um, and also the motion blur is more intense if we scoot a bunch of keyframes together as well, um, if we lessen the amount of time between them. So yeah, now you can really see that it's blurring. And again, because all of these animations are kept on separate parts, you know, you can make big changes very fast. Um, so say, you know, instead of from the center of the screen, we wanted it way over where this one ends, literally just copy the position, you know, paste it up here, and now it's coming from over there. Um, say at the end, we don't really want it to shrink again. Um, for that, you can literally just delete the keyframe, and values will always stay the same as what the last keyframe was. So now it's just going to stay big. We don't even we don't have to like put in another scale keyframe. It just stays now. And then you know, say we want it to shrink again at three seconds, we can copy the first keyframes. Oh, and uh, because I didn't have a keyframe here for scale, you know, it's changing over the course of this. Um, and to prevent that from happening, we just have to make sure we keep it 100% between the two, and we just do that by putting in another keyframe. And I just copied it, but you know, you can also just punch in a value, hit enter, and a new keyframe will appear. Okay, and also because we copied this one where it starts from way over here, um, it it's now ending over there. If we wanna bring it back to the middle, we have to punch in that position. So you take this last one, and I know that 960, 540, that's the middle of the screen. And now, should go over here, to the side, to the middle, and that's a decent little animation for what we did in just a few minutes. So, um, the possibilities are limitless. Okay, now I promised you, uh, what the? Um, you may be wondering, how do we change the color when it's not an option down here? Um, color is a specific effect that you can get to over here um, in this little effects panel. If for whatever reason you don't see this, um, you can also go into effect when you have a specific clip selected and add effects here. Um, so that one would be under <gasps> ah! 
So that is under effect, um, generate and fill. And this will change the fill color of our object. Um, by default, it's set to red. I don't know if that would be the same for everyone. Um, another thing so that we don't have to keep, you know, hitting space to play and moving back um, is you can also, if you fully expand or zoom out, show your whole timeline, you can drag this guy all the way over to your last keyframe and then it'll play a loop just in that section, which is super useful for, I don't know exactly what we're doing right now, I guess. So great, so now it's looping. So we want to change our fill color. After adding that effect, um, effects appeared right here. So you can click these triangles to drop those. And this will list all the effects, but right now fill is the only effect we have. Um, and then we have this little effect for color, which as I said, the default is red. It's red now. We can hit the stopwatch. We've made a keyframe. You know, we want it to change color by the end of this. We make another keyframe by clicking this little diamond. Um, and I don't know why I didn't mention this before, but another thing you can do is hit various keyboard shortcuts to automatically make keyframes. So you don't always have to click this stupid little thing over here. Um, by default, Alt P is position. So if I hit Alt P, one appears down there. Um, Alt S is scale. Um, I believe Alt O. No, Alt R is rotation, but when working with custom effects, there is no default keyboard shortcut. And if you want it to set one up really quick, it's very useful. So you can do that by going to edit keyboard shortcuts. Um, I've deleted mine in advance, but you know, right now we're working with color. So it'll appear, um, let's type in keyframe color in the search bar. And now we have an add color keyframe thing that we can make. Um, if you double click over under shortcut, you can make your own. Um, so I don't know, I'll just do Alt I, sounds great. I don't know if that was a previous shortcut, um, but I don't think it's very important. So Alt I now makes a color keyframe. Um, so if you're working with a lot of stuff, and yeah, you just get really sick <laughs> of hitting the stopwatch and all of that. You now have a keyboard shortcut that not only works for color, it works for whatever you have selected. So, you know, now that I have opacity selected, Alt-I makes a keyframe there. Um, if I select invert, Alt-I makes a keyframe there. Okay, so we can delete this keyframe <laughs> or undo, um, get rid of it. We just want the keyframe here and over there. Um, and right now, again, it's only staying on red because we need to tell it to change some values. So you go to one of the keyframes, you can see it's selected there. Um, it's directly on top of it because that's highlighted. Click the red, um, pick a different color, um, which we can just do blue. And now when we go back and watch, over time it shifts to blue and um, you can also see if you drop down this little triangle over here, you can actually see the change. So if we, you know, let's click and drag that keyframe under somewhere else in the timeline, go back over here. Um, we can add yet another color, another keyframe, and now it'll shift between all three of those colors. Really is shifting over a ton of different colors because, you know, all of these various values are shifting. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it's shifting between our three keyframes. <coughs> so there you have it. Um, we have covered keyframes, what they mean, just drastic changes over time. Um, whether that means you're drawing animations by hand or, um, doing, you know, animations like this, uh, <laughs> they're just they just represent major change um, in the modern age they can be automated which is really great um, they can be eased to make them look more natural and uh, we have also covered moving objects around changing their scale and changing their color um, so stick around for the next tutorial and you should be uh, 
using keyframes for way more advanced stuff and stuff that's actually very useful. <laughs> Again, my name is Stuart Rolke. This has been a Somerville Media Center production, and I look forward to absolutely definitely not seeing you. Don't forget to save that like smash button and subscribe. Oh,